that's right. Just about to start. Okay, I think we're going to get started. Uh, can you all hear me? And on Zoom as well? Um, so welcome again to the second lecture of CSE 332 uh, two, two, Machine Learning. So, um, so today we, and, and, and maybe on Thursday we're going to go through uh, a review of probability and statistics and also of linear algebra. So we're going to talk about uh, many key concepts that, uh, that you um, that you that that I, I hope some of you have encountered these before because I won't I won't manage to go through all of this in in great detail, um, but but these are really key concepts on which we're going to build later on when we when we do more more uh, uh, more complicated M ML models for example we're going to need a lot of linear algebra a lot of statistics and and probabilities so um, so that's what we're going to go to today and maybe maybe on Thursday if we don't finish today um, so. Um, um, uh, a couple of news before we go. Have you all seen that we updated assignment one uh, and added three uh, new exercises? Yeah. Um, can can I can you raise a hand if any of you do not have access to Canvas so far? So everyone has access to Canvas. You do not have access to Canvas. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Oh, I see. I see. So, so if you d d if you want to enroll, like get back to me or to to the TAs afterwards, so we can uh, talk about it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but in general, so I'm hoping I, I'm assuming everyone has access to Canvas, and you see like the, all the assignments we posted there, the, the links, for example, and and also the um, the announcements we made. Um, um, and we we also going to have a discussion session today, so we scheduled it for uh, so it will start today, so it'll be every Tuesday at three twenty in Oaks one hundred five. So do come to it because my, my TAs, which are there at the back, will um, uh, will go through, sorry, they, they're over there. So, so they, they, they will go through some of the things like j how to run a Jupyter notebook, how to submit your assignment. They'll go through some, even some uh, derivations and the material in the class, for example. They do like a derivation of some exercises. So, so do, um, do come to it um, if you can. Um, okay, shall we get started? Um, we, we are recording it, yes. So, so, so the recordings are posted uh, automatically on Canvas. Uh, so f this is for the lecture capture, and we're also recording the Zoom. Um, so, um, but, but essentially, these ones are automatically up uploaded after the class. So or the discussion session, we, we're also recording that. I, I think, uh, yes, so double check with the TAs, but we are recording it, yes. Um, yeah. I understand there might be uh, so, uh, some there might be some clashes with some of your classes, so, but so we are recording it. But do come if you can. Um, all right. So so th this is what uh, I've been saying. So um, three new uh, questions in the assignment one. So the existing question did not change. We just added three more exercises, and and it's due on October third. So uh, this is uh, six days from now. So do start working on it uh, soon. It's not too difficult, um, but uh, but do start working on it soon. Yeah. We added some math problems that have uh, some derivations, so those uh, might, if might be more tricky. Come to the office hours to ask questions about that, and we can um, we can guide you. Um, of, as always, all up-to-date info is on Canvas homepage. So if there's anything that that that's inconsistent in the slides, do do refer to to the Canvas. So, okay, uh, probability review. So. Um, but just to get an idea, a feel for, for so how many of you have done, uh, for example, like uh, frequency of Bayesian statistics before? Just raise your hand if you have. Got it. Um, how many of you have uh, taken a probability class and worked with for some probability density functions or probability mass function? Got it. Um, linear algebra? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, 
for example, more uh, uh, eigenvalue decomposition, singular value decomposition, a bit less, but uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. very nice. Okay, great. So, um, so let, let's, let's go through this. Um, um, so essentially, um, imagine we have a die and we're rolling it, for example. We, we have a die and we're rolling it and it can land on one, two, three, four, or five, or six, for example. This is a, a die. So here, when we're talking probability and we talk of outcome space in the case of a die, we talk about all the possible uh, landings, all the possible events that can occur. So for example, the die can land in one, two, three, four, five, or six. So th this is the outcome space, the, the set of all these uh, six uh, possible um, outcomes that can happen. So and, and each outcome, also called an atom, has a probability density or mass. So for example, the probability that, that the die lands on one is one over six for a fair die. Um, and then we talk about a, an, an event. An event is a subset of omega, of the outcome space. So for example, an event is, for example, if a die lands on, uh, on odd numbers, for example, like one, uh, gosh, this is one, one, three, or five. Uh, sorry for the mistake. So. Um, so ba basically, um, the die lands on odd numbers, one, three, or five. Uh, I will correct that. Um, I will correct it now, actually. Um, or, or, or it, for example, it can land on, on an even number, two, four, or six. Um, one, three, or five. So yeah, we have a few more people in the classroom, so I'm waiting for a bit. Yeah, okay, so, so one, three, or five, for example, the, the event that, that a die lands on an odd number, for example. And then he, here P of event, the probability of this event is the sum of integral over all the atoms. So here, like, you know, that, that over one, three, and five, basically all these events, we sum them together, probability together, and that's the probability of the, of the, of the, of the entire event. Um, and, and now a random variable V is simply a function that maps omega to usually R. So this is a function that, that takes uh, any, any, anything from the outcome space, any of these atoms, or, 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 or even a subset, and, and maps that to, to R. So here, the v, v is the value of event, and P of V is a distribution. Um, so if V, for example, would be the value that would be this 1 over 6, for example, this, this probability. And P of V is the, is the whole distribution of probability over the entire outcome space. Um, so let's take an example. So we, what if we roll a fair six-sided six die and then flip that many coins? So let, let me repeat. So, so we first roll a die, and then, uh, so no, no flip a coin. We roll a die, and then we flip that many fair coins. So if we roll a, a number two, then we flip two coins. If, if we roll number four, then we flip four coins. So what is omega? So, so this is omega, for example, the set of all. Uh, so, so first, th this, you see there's two pairs. So, so the first is the number of uh, the number we roll with the die. So if you roll a one, then we flip uh, one one coin. So it could be a head or a tail. If you roll number two, then we can get head 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 tail tail head or tail tail and so on. So basically, and if you roll a six, for example, then we flip six coins and then we get. So, so the outcome space then is the, is all these pairs, all these possible events that can happen all the possibilities of, for rolling a die and, and for flipping the coins. Um, and again, we can define an event f, for example, the die lands on an even number. And then this, this will be a subset of, of, uh, of, uh, of omega, for example, um, like this, for example. So, so two had, and all the possibilities of the coins, four and all possibilities of the coins, six and all co possible coin flips. Um, so number of heads here is, again, is a random variable. Um, and all of these coin flips are again random variables. Uh, uh, are you with me so far? Yeah. Um, so, I have a quick question. Yeah. The real numbers. Um, so, for example, or yeah, um, in general, positive real numbers. Uh, so, so. Yeah, 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 exactly. So in that case, it's not. It, in that case, for example, the. Um, so, so, so it's not per se wrong to define it like that, but uh, indeed the, the, um, the output of the function would be, for example, just one, two, three, four, five. So, so the, 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 um, 
yeah. Um, um, okay, so um, so what is the expectation? So then we talk about expectation or expected value. The expected value is basically um, we take a sum. Uh, so for a particular random variable v, we take the sum over all the atoms that this random variable can take. So th and, and we take the value of that of each of those atoms and we multiply by the probability so uh, that 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 action can, that atom can occur so so and again I'm replying so atoms again in the previous example were something like you know one or head or two or head tails for example this is an atom and we take the probability of this atom occurring and we multiply by by the value so um, I'll come back to an example in, in a second. Um, let's um, let, let me talk uh, more formally, for example, about expectation and, and variance. So, so expectation uh, for discrete random variables is defined as such. So then, if we take the expectation value of x, then we say again we um, we take all the possible uh, values x that it can take and multiply by probabilities uh, as a, as, a, as it was also earlier on the slide. But now we, we simply don't. We simply abstract away the atoms, the representation of the atoms. And we talk about continuous random variables, we have to take the integral. So then we integrate. Uh, so now, for example, x is a continuous uh, random variable. And, and we take the integral, for example, from minus infinity to infinity, or, or here, just the support of, of uh, that. Uh, for example, if x is defined only on positive numbers, we take the integral from 0 to infinity uh, of f x times f of x. So this, this is the definition of, of expectation. And then the variance is defined as the expectation, expected value of x minus e of x to the power of 2. Um, and this is also the second moment. It's called the second moment. But it, this is the definition. So I, I'm hoping, so you guys will be sort of familiar with this. I'm hoping that this won't be like first time you've seen some of these concepts. But, but if you do, do, yeah, do, ask, do come to us in the office hours to, to explain in more detail. Um, Here's, for example, like a, an example of, for example, a derivation of the various expansions. So if you have variance of x, um, we, uh, by definition uh, from the previous slide, it's expected, expected value of x minus e of x squared. Uh, and what we can do, we can actually like uh, expand the bracket here. So this is x squared minus 2x times e of x plus e of x squared. Um, and then, um, so there's several things we can do when we take the expected value of this uh, big formula, you can it's, it's almost like taking the expected value of the pieces. So we can take, that means this is e of x squared minus e of x, uh, so the uh, e of 2x here. So 2 comes in the front. Um, e of e of x is always e of x. And then basically we, we end up with, um, after simplifying this, we end up with e of x squared minus e of x squared. So this is uh, also like a known result uh, in variance. Um, Uh, I, I, is everyone following me so far? Am I? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, so, so then uh, I want to introduce. So, re briefly review again. I hope you you've seen this before. Uh, concept of independence and conditional probability. So, so here, um, what do we say about when two events are independent? They're generally independent if. So uh, this is this is the definition. So when when p of a and b is equal to p of a times p of b. But what what does this mean? So. Um, this a, a, a p of a and b is the joint probability of the two events happening together. Um, p of a is the is the simple, is the marginal probability on a. P of b is the marginal on b. So it means that for every possible outcomes of a and b, so for all possible outcomes of uh, random variables a and b, these will be equal. P of uh, a and b is equal to that. So th this will happen for all possible outcomes of a and b. Um, yeah, and, and um, conditional probability uh, of A given B by definition is defined as P of A and B uh, divided by P of B. So, so this is this, this definition of conditional probability. Again, I'm hoping you've, you've seen this before. Um, it just means, so intuitively it means, for example, um, if, if, for example, an event B already happened, what's, what's my conditional uh, probability of A? What, what will happen to A once B already happened? So, so for example, in the case of the uh, the die and the, and the coins, if if I already rolled the die and it landed on a three, then then my conditional of of the yeah of of a given b, for example, my conditional on flipping those many coins given 
the dial under node three is is as such. Um, so we also have, uh, so this is also symmetric. So P of A and B is equal to P of A given B times P of B. Um, so from, from, uh, from this formula, from the commercial probability formula above, but it's also, we can also uh, write it as P of uh, A and B is also equal to P of B and A, so we can flip them around. And it's also equal to this, P of B given A times P of A. So this is all symmetric. And this gives us Bayes' rule. So if, if, uh, if we combine these together, then we have that P of A given B is P of B given A P of times P of A divided by P of B. So, um, so I, I know it might, uh, if you haven't seen Bayes' rule before, have, how many of you have seen Bayes' rule? Most of them, okay, so, 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 okay, so, so that, I'm, I'm, we good. Um, it, it might be a bit uh, counterintuitive, but literally this is a definition. We essentially compute a posterior over uh, of A given B uh, by using a prior over A times a likelihood function divided by this normalization factor. So we'll, we'll, we'll get back to this a bit, in a bit later, but this is how we can get base rules simply. Expectation and some rules. So um, expectations add up together. So E of V1 plus V2 is equal to E of V1 plus E of V2. Th these are rules. Um, another, um, uh, there's also the sum rule or the cost of the call the rule of conditioning. Um, so if, if a particular set of events partition a particular outcome space omega, and here by partition, we mean, uh, d does everyone understand what partition means? Like uh, essentially they, they, um, they complete the whole space. Like, so if you add them all up together, they, they, they cover everything. And also their intersection is, uh, is, is null, the null set. Um, so P of event, um, for example, is equal to um, P of e, EI for e any other event, for example, EI. Um, so if we sum over all these EI, so P of EI is times P of event given EI. And by the previous rules, we get that this is equal to, yes, P of EI and event. So we can, mar so this gets marginalized out and this is equal to P of event. So, um, and the same for a random variable, the same thing. Um, we get exactly the same thing. So. Um, so basically we can add these new events and, and then marginalize them out. And we get, uh, yeah, we, and that's how, yeah. Um, and we, we, we will use that a lot in some of uh, the, the exercises. Um, so let's take an example, because we, we uh, with, 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 for example, with the die and the, and the rows. So, so what's the expected number of heads, for example, in, um, in, a, in, a, in a die row? So how, ma how many, how many, possible landings we have, one, two, three, four, five, or six. So the event space is, uh, has uh, six atoms. Um, so, so, so we simply sum over all possible atoms that, that the, the, the die can take from one to six. We take the probability of, of rolling that times the expected value of, the, of, of heads given, given a particular row. So, so this is equal to, uh, so e each of these is one over six. And then the expected value, so if, if, I, if I roll three, uh, for example, a three, then I, then I essentially flip three, uh, three coins. So, so then I'll get what? I'll get the expected value of heads will be three over two because uh, only 50% of the time they will land in a head. So if I, if I roll a one, it will also be one over two. Expected value of that will be one over two. So this is, um, so this is, uh, so it comes down to one over six times uh, one over two plus two over two and so on. So this is 21 over 12, 175. So that's the expected number of heads uh, in our um, coin flipping and die example from earlier. Um, so this is another important concept. So joint distributions can factorize. So, um, so basically if we have, for example, um, a, a joint distribution made of three variables, so in this case, S, T, and U, then um, what we can do, we can, we can say the following. We can say that we first sample, for example, uh, P of S. Uh, this is equal to uh, P of S. Then we sample P of T given S. And then we sample P of U given S and T. So we can write it like that. Or we can, we can, uh, we can, we can write it, uh, we can flip them around and say we first sample T, for example. We put T here and then uh, S and U, for example. And we can, we can do any order we want. So, um, so essentially any joint distribution can factorize uh, as such into these. Um, and um, conditional distributions, again, are also distributions. I wanted to make this, this point. So, uh, so P of A given B is uh, by definition 
like that. And, and also, if we add another conditioning, for example, if you add a C, for example, the, the, the same still holds. This will still be distributions. So, so, so um, P of A given B and C now, we simply add another C, P of A and B given C times B of B given C. So, um, so, so, so you see, these ones initially were not conditioned on the right-hand side, but now they become conditioned. But they still stay as distributions. They still have the same, the same properties of a distribution. They all sum to one. They all have, uh, yeah, um, uh, all the, all the, uh, yeah, all the, pro all the known properties of a distribution. Um, uh, how are we so far? How are we? Uh, everyone? Um, am I going too fast? No. Okay. Um, so, so Bayesian learning. Um, so here, so here, how do we, um, how do we use Bayes rule to do learning? To do to basically to basically learn uh, new concepts. So, so let's see how this works. So, so, so we can assume a joint distribution, P of x and y. So here x is our our training data. So a set of images, for example, and y's could be labels. So, so again, um, what we want to label when classifying the images, cats, dogs, or predict the price of houses, and so on. So what we want is to get a posterior distribution of on y given x. So what's the what's the distribution of my house prices given given the images of houses, for example, how they look. So um, or, or for this is this is in case of regression, but let's take a simple example for classification. What's the what's the distribution of my image having a cat or a dog or any other object given given uh, given this image? Um, so for each um, yeah, and, and, and how we, we, we can do this with using base rule. So we basically apply base rule and say that P, uh, using the previous formula we, we discussed. So, so P of Y given X is equal to P of X given Y times P of Y over P of X. So what, what let, let's distill this a bit more. So, so, so the red one, we call it posterior over Y. This is what we want to find, the, this posterior. Um, the blue is the likelihood of X given Y. So th this is a function that we can generally model quite quite easily when we go to back later p of y given x in, the, in green is the prior over y so this is a, a prior belief of for example in the case of uh, cats and dogs for example what's the prior that uh, is some kind of prior belief that we uh, we know this data set should contain this many cats and this many dogs for example that that kind of level of uh, of, uh, of understanding um, and p of x here this final term this is the no, uh, it's called the normalization constant or the partition function um, and it's often intractable to compute, and we'll, we'll, we'll see why. Um, because this is a prior overall, of, uh, this is, remember X is a data set, it's a set of images. Um, and to compute that, it's, we have to do a, an integral, which is often intractable. Um, but this, this is sort of the, yeah, the, the, the key idea with, the, yeah, this, this is what at least what it terms mean. And basically this, this is such, a, and I want to say this is such an important uh, concept. We'll be using this a lot. And, and this, is, this is used very heavily in machine learning for many kinds of models. So we can do this Bayesian learning with the decision trees. We can do this with um, uh, neural nets. We can do this with, uh, yeah. So because any these likelihood models and these priors can be implemented with almost any kind of model. It can be a linear regression here. It could be a neural network. It could be, yeah, um, all kinds of like support vector machine, a kernel machine, any of that. So. Uh, can 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 express, for example, these uh, these likelihood and priors and so on. Um, and generally, it's very important. Uh, that this is heavily used, especially when we want to reason about uncertainty. So we have here because because we have probabilities here. So we can we can basically um, quantify the certainty we are in our predictions of, of y's. Um, P of y given x. So it's also so as I said earlier, it's proportional to P of x given y times P of y. Um, and and uh, and and the question is how how do we um, how do we do this in practice for learning? So so for example, if you have data, we can learn p of x given y. We can learn the likelihood function and p of y and the prior. And so so remember these two terms, the the the, the blue and the green. These are the ones we can compute generally. And and we so we do we, we learn them from the data, and then we predict a label y with the largest product. So between these two. That's basically, for example, like a rough, a rough idea. Um, there's a few more things to it, but um, 
like for example, we, we, we drop the normalization constant. We have to somehow uh, get back to that, but, but for now we just we can simply do this. Um, let, let, let's do a quick exercise actually. So, so, so imagine you're, you're a street hustler. You're on the street, for example, you're a street hustler and you take bets on, a, on coin flips, for example, and uh, sort of gambling and uh, yeah, and, and you, for example, and you see um, this, these outcomes, like head, the coin landed on a head, then on a tail, then back on a head. And, and, and what's the probability that the next flip is H? Sorry? 50%. Um, yes, yes. So that, that's when like the, the, if you assume the coin is fair. Um, and what if you don't assume the coin is fair? Yeah, yeah. Let, let's. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, let's uh, let's see. Um, how, how many of you have heard of frequentist uh, versus? Uh, have you heard of frequentist approaches? Well, roughly. So, so it's basically frequentist is basically when you. When you just do maximum likelihood, when you just maximize the likelihood function, what we spoke earlier, the, the blue term in, in the base rule. So, so l imagine you assume you're a frequentist. So, so, so let, let, let's formally compute what is P of H for the coin. What is the, the likelihood that it, it lands on, on head? So, um, so how do you do this? Let, let's actually do a quiz. So, um, so I want you all like um, use your mobile phones. So join uh, this link. And I'll uh, and use use your name, use your full name, for this. Um, so not a nickname. And and I'll start on my side. No, you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll give you the joint code right away. One sec. I'm waiting for everyone to to scan it here. So let me see one second. I need to extend my screen because you'll see the answers, sort of, if, <laughs> if I share it. Uh, uh, yeah? The, I, I'll show you the join code, uh, but um, give me one second, because it's, uh, how do I, because um, it's, it's in mirror mode now. Let me do this, let me disconnect briefly. So, Sorry, one second. I'm almost there. Uh huh. 
Okay. Okay, that's the joint code. Um, so, <coughs> so you have the joint code here, uh, also for the people on Zoom. Yeah, okay. People still joining. Are we all ready? Yeah? So, um, let me minimize this. Okay. So let's start. So, so you'll have one and a half minutes to, to um, Okay. So Okay, so so most people answered two thirds. We have some with one third, some with a half five people with four nines. Um, can I first hear from the people who answered one third? Why, uh, why one third? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. 
um, yeah, um, yeah. So, so you, you assume the prior is a half got. Um, what about one half? Somebody one half. Um, four ninths. Anyone? Want to volunteer an answer? Okay. So, um, so the the correct answer was was the uh, uh, two thirds because um, th this is a frequentist calculation. So basically, we do not assume priors. So uh, and um, and basically, in a frequentist, you just maximize your likelihood, and you see absolutely no prior, for example, on the parameter theta. So so because the the coin landed twice on the head and once on the tail, you, uh, you it's it's likely that actually was biased, and and then like the frequentist calculation gives you yeah two thirds. So, so, so that's what you have to find. You have to find, um, um, so, so, so P of H is theta. Mm -hmm. So from the beginning, so this is theta, one minus theta, and theta again. Okay. So it's it's theta squared times one minus theta, which is theta squared minus theta, theta cubed. cubed. And, and this is your, your equation, so it's step one. And step two, you have to maximize, why does it not show? Um, uh, and then in step two, basically you have to maximize the derivative of that with respect to theta. So you have to, max so you have to solve that, e and no, you have to solve that is equal to zero, the derivative of that equals zero. Mm -hmm. So theta squared minus theta cubed is zero, so theta gives you uh, two thirds. Yeah? Um, so, okay, uh, next question. Are you still, you're still in the quiz, right? Mm -hmm. So let's see next question. Sorry, it's stuck on the last one. Is it stuck for everyone? Or no, it works. So, huh? That'll kick me out, right? What is this? Oh, you already you already answered, no? Um. Um. Okay, so. It was too quick, no? Yeah, yeah I see, I see. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I know, I, I can't change now, uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll give more time next. I thought it was, yeah, it would take uh, less time, this one. Um, so le let's look at the results, so. So 31 of you answered four out of 27. A few, two out of three, four out of nine, two out of nine. Um, so, so here we simply do, um, again, we expand this, and then we say that P of, uh, P of H, so, so first of all, the correct answer is this one, four out of 27. And uh, it's basically, we simply expand this to be P of H given theta equals this, times P of T given theta, times P of H given theta. So that's um, it's literally two thirds times one third times two thirds again. So that comes out to four out of 27. Um, when, uh, this is also the first time I'm running this. Do you see the answer after, after the question? You do not see the answer because I did not there. I did write it in, huh? Next question. This is because you want to end the quiz, yeah. Ah, <laughs> congratulations. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, let's keep. So, because I have included answers from here. Hide answers? Show sure. Uh Yeah. Um, hmm. I, I'll look into it. Yeah. But, but basically, I've, I've, I've told you how you do them. Essentially, so essentially, you, 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 c you take those derivatives, set them to zero, and then you solve that equation and you get two thirds for the first question. Um, okay. So. so the same question just ended up being P of H times P of T times P of H, right? P of H times P of T times P of H, exactly. So P of T is one minus P of H. So it was, P of H is two thirds, that's, that's theta. P of T is one minus two thirds, which is just one third. So you just multiply the three out and. Um, um, yeah. Um, anyway, okay. So let's get back to the slides. Not kernel methods, that's for sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, um, so I have them in the slides as well. Essentially, um, so so here, see, so so p of h times p of t times p of h here is it comes to theta one of minus theta times theta, which is theta squared minus theta, and then you maximize this function by setting the derivative to zero. So this is called the first order condition when we have a function and we maximize it with uh, by setting the derivative to be zero. Um, you um, you also need this. Uh, you also need a few other constraints. You need a function to be to, to be to be concave for that to happen, because otherwise you can reach a minimum here when you do it. But essentially, this helps. So so we do the maximum uh, this equation. We solve this, and the derivative of p of h d of h uh, by uh, respect to theta is two theta. So theta squared goes to two theta minus three theta squared equals zero. So so that comes down to theta equals two thirds. Um, um, and that's the second question. So basically, um, uh, once we know that theta is two thirds, again, the computer full likelihood would be, yeah, we just multiply these terms, p of h times p of t times p of h. Um, so what I wanted to show, so this, this, this is called the frequentist approach. And basically, we do not assume any prior on theta. Um, this, this means that um, we just maximize likelihood. This is like a maximum likelihood solution. And, and here, we, we, yeah, in that case, we just get theta equal two thirds. So, so the coin, you assume the coin was not fair. So um, by observing that. Um, and so the frequentist uh, maximize does this. So, so it does uh, the maximum of a theta of this likelihood function of theta, which is the P of H, TH given theta. So how, how about a Bayesian approach? So, so what this, is, this, is, this is in contrast with what people call a Bayesian approach, where in Bayesian uh, uh, pri parameter estimation, what we also have a prior distribution. So we also model not just, we don't maximize just the likelihood, but we also model a prior, and then we multiply that likelihood with the prior. And that's, that's what we call Bayesian parameter estimation. So, so in the Bayesian parameter estimation, we need to assume a prior distribution on theta. So um, this is what, I, uh, was what our colleague did in the back, and, and uh, yeah. Um, uh, basically, we uh, we can assume a prior on theta, so for example, on p of h. Um, so and and this, this gives us in that case a two-phase experiment. So we first set a prior on theta, and then we uh, flip uh, flip the coins, for example, three times. And this is how we, how we can model it. Um, and the posterior on theta is given by base rule. So again, posterior of, th of theta, given you observe h t h, is the likelihood of observing h t h given theta times the prior over theta. Divided by uh, p of h t h, which is the margin, which is the marginal. So we'll, uh, we'll discuss a bit later how we model that. But for now, we won't, we won't, we will just uh, 
uh, remove it. This is a, a normalization constant. So because th this has to be a distribution at the end, this this right hand side has to be a distribution. It has to sum to one. So uh, so essentially we can we can, we we don't have to oftentimes we don't have to model it, especially for discrete probabilities, because we can just uh, uh, do this and divide by the sum of all the numbers, and that basically uh, uh, removes us the need to compute this. So in this case, we uh, th this comes uh, to theta squared times one minus theta times p of theta. Um, so th this is what we get here divided by this normalization factor. So this is what we call Bayesian parameter estimation. So let, let, let's take um, again an example. So so let's, let's assume we have a uh, a prior of theta, which is which is uh, so theta can only take three values: zero, a half, or one, and these are all equal. So, for example, equal probability each. So we assume equal probability a third to zero, a half, and one. So what um, what do we get? We get theta squared times um, one minus theta times p of theta. So this this is like the likelihood. This is the prior. So uh, if we multiply that, this is zero. This is uh, zero, one over twenty-four, and zero for each of these three cases. Because when we have theta zero and one, uh, th these terms simply go, uh, are, are simply zero. Um, so we only get a non-negative number, or non, 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 non-zero number for, for the middle one. And here in this case, the posterior of theta equals a half, um, given HTH is simply, uh, is simply one. So um, because we take this number, one over 24, and divide by all the sum by zero plus one over twenty four plus zero. So this uh, this comes down to one. This is this is basically the yeah the only uh, the only possibility for for theta to happen. So if it's a half, if it's zero or one, you will never see either um, a tail or a head. So yeah, um, does it make sense? Um, Another example, for example, we can assume a, a continuous density. We don't have to assume a discrete. So, 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 so far we assumed, for example, that theta could take three values, a discrete distribution. But now we can assume, for example, like a uniform one. So if you assume like a, uh, the, the prior density is uniformly one for theta between zero and one, then we can, we can still compute this as well. So, so now we have a different prior density, which is continuous. Um, our Bayesian term, so this is the likelihood, theta uh, squared times one minus theta times p of theta. And this is equal to uh, to this theta squared times one minus theta because p of theta is always one between zero and one. So, and the posterior then of p of theta given that is comes up to this basically because we um, again we, we take this uh, this this and we basically divide by the normalization factor. So that normalization constant uh, seems to be uh, one over twelve, and we divide by one over twelve, we get twelve back. So so the posterior is this. Um, I, I'm not going to need of the calculation, but that's that's how the general approach how we do it. We we basically compute these terms, and then we can simply divide uh, by by the sum by the normalization constant. Um, and this is, for example, a plot of how, for example, when um, uh, th I've, I've only showed here, so um, so I've, I've showed here the, the posterior of, of theta uh, given, but but if we plot it out when when theta goes from zero to one, we see that there's a maximum at two thirds. So we we th this this function achieves a maximum at that particular uh, point, and 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 you see it's, it's quite skewed. It's a bit more skewed to to the right, and that's because we observed two heads and one tail. For example, if we have observed two heads and two tails, then it would have been uh, symmetric. But because we observed many more more heads than than a tail, then that's how why we get it skewed. Um, so, so it is likely, it's, it's possible that the coin is fair, but it's also likely, more likely that it's actually, it might not be fair. It might actually be, uh, yeah, th that theta might be skewed. So, um, so the average is uh, three out of three fifths and so on. And, and in particular, this is also not a coincidence because um, there's something called Laplace's rule of succession. And basically uh, you can compute, if you have something like n events uh, and, and we have the number of failures and number of successes, basically you can compute What's the probability of the next event happening using some this concept called a process of succession? So you can simply add one observation from each. So if you add, if you observe two out of three, then you you add two successes and one failure, for example. Then you add one to successes and and you add two to the to the total numbers. You divide by the total numbers, and that's how you can get the yeah. Um, 
the next probability of the next thing happening. So um, any, any uh, let me stop here. Any questions so far? Um, Uh, um, in that case, let's, let's take a short five minute break and then we'll resume, um, resume in five minutes. So at, yeah. Um. Yeah. On the matrix, I kept on <laughs> calculating, yeah. calculating yeah, yeah, yeah. on Friday. I'm not sure if I'm doing anything wrong, but this is the characteristic equation that I'm coming up with. And I posted some video on, on, on uh, Piazza for, for the other students. Uh, I learned this trick from that video that uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, th this is this this right here is our determinant for for for, uh, for the matrix. Yeah, yes, yeah. Sir. And this right here is the trace of that matrix. Yeah, and yeah, this yeah. This one is the minor of, of of the matrix, but I mean. I couldn't factor this, and I was kind of getting disappointed in myself. Yeah, uh, yeah, Needing to yeah. go back to high school. And <laughs> no worries, no worries, no worries. Am I you doing something uh, wrong? No, you're doing good. So you could be the determinant here, right? The determinant. Uh, oh no, but you have. Uh, Th no, this, this is our, our matrix, and uh, this is lambda i, and I'm trying to uh, solve the characteristic equation for for oh. lambda. Right, 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 right. So. You try, uh, um, you're trying to find a... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think this might be correct. This, this, yeah, I, I haven't done it for this particular matrix, but it, it might, it, it has to, yeah. It, it's it's the third degree polynomial, yeah. yeah. Um, I double yeah, checked yeah. it with, with Octave MATLAB. One, yeah. I mean, one, one um, fits in this equation. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there was... Um, 1.665 um, five and 100. Zero zero. I don't remember exactly the other two numbers, but I couldn't decipher what those numbers were. Right, right, and right. I wasn't sure if I'm doing anything wrong because however I did the determinant, I came up with this. You know, even even I did some row operations and, you know, I was getting the, uh, you know... But the determinant, I know, but it has to be a single number at the end. So it has to be, I know I know this is a critical equation, but you have to, it has to be a single number. Like a scalar, a scalar. For determinant? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the determinant is not a problem. I mean, it's I've calculated that. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to make it to um, where I'm getting the eigenvalues. And oh, the eigenvalues. Eigen I know. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I'll go through it today. Uh, yes, but uh, uh, I think you can do it like that to compute eigenvalues. But what people normally do is they solve the eigenvalue equations, which are like... Uh, but you can compute it in many ways, actually. So you, you have a matrix A, A, uh, uh, for example, and, and v, v, for example, is, a, is an eigenvector equals lambda V. So this is simple. Like, so A is your matrix. A is your, like, uh, three by three matrix, for example. You know, with, like, uh, yeah, the three by three matrix that we, that we have in V. V is a, is a simple, like, a vector. Like one by three vector. Let's say x one, x two. Yeah, x one, x two, uh, v one, v two, v three. Um, lambda is a scalar. Yeah, and v is again the same thing. So, so basically, um, and and this is like an equation you generally solve. Yeah, um, by literally kind of like yeah, multiplying them out and. Uh, Professor, I did that that method too, and uh, you know it makes uh, computation much more complicated. Oh, I mean, like got it, got it, got it. The everything. I mean, because uh, when we are, I mean, you see, we have terms like one minus lambda, you know, and then the three minus lambda. When we are doing the determinant for these guys, the, the, they're getting it much more complicated. Got I it. intentionally s stick with this row because this zero is making life a little easier. But I wasn't sure what I'm doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, ask, I would say, uh, ask the TAs, ask the TAs on this kind of yes, like, sir. because uh, yeah, um, they they're more familiar with the with the okay, assignment. Okay. Like, uh, yes, I so the, the, but um, yeah, ask the TAs on this. Like, and 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 we'll go. But like, uh, 
I would uh, I would try this. Let, 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 me, let me let me have a look as well, and like we can come in the office hours on uh, yes, on, uh, of on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and question one, I didn't understand the wording, so I didn't know if I have to blame it on my English skills or I have to blame it on my intelligence. It what was, was question one? It, it, it seemed like um, I was having difficulty pulling up the, so I ended up using Google Google uh, Collab um, because for some reason, you, uh, what is it? Uh, the, 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 gosh. Something notebook we were using. Uh, Jupiter, notebook. Jupiter, Jupiter notebook. Jupiter notebook. Yeah, notebook. yeah. I, I couldn't open that guy. Right, and, right, and, uh, right. Just, yeah, and then um, it seemed like, um, I mean, both of the the, the the sentences that we have, both of the statement statements are, are pretty much the same thing, you know. So, uh, yeah, if you don't mind, I mean, you can go over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. I've been posting things on on, on Piazza left and right, but. But uh, apparently there was just Alex in there and Swati was in there. That was the only people, and I was feeling all lonely. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, but we have uh, like all these like yeah. We have, but do post. We we will we'll respond. We will respond to yeah. Like, um, I think people haven't. Uh, it's just at the beginning of the of the class, so people like still. Well, the, the assignment is due next Monday, right? I know. Monday, I know. Right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. So I would I would recommend yeah, kind of. Um, you can also, if you have any questions, so to wait until the office hours, come to my TAs, especially for the assignment on the office, uh, come to my TAs. And, um, and if you have a, more questions about the slides and material, you can c come to me. And um, um, what I want to say, yeah, like, um, you can also go, come, go, go ahead to the other exercises and come back to this. Like, you don't have to, don't be stuck at it. So, like, go to the other, do the other ones also and write, write a note, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, leave, leave the, the, write the question down and come with them to the office hours. Yeah. Yeah. For, for the LaTeX part, um, I mean, I was trying to, you know, kind of work with LaTeX. Yeah. For yeah. Kind of everything. So I went to to Libre Office and I'm doing the, yeah. the, the, yeah. the PDF stuff. Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm yeah. doing my best. That's okay. That's okay. No, I know. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. 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 No, that's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, so try, try. If you, you say to try this, yeah. Yeah, I, I tried it in, in, in one of these pages. I mean, I, I can show you. It was came out being very, very horrible and very intimidating. So I thought to myself, I, I would definitely make a mistake going through that route because uh, definitely that is that is the way. Uh, mm. uh, this is this 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 was uh, what I was trying to you know kind of submit. And, uh, got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm got it. This is the inverse of that uh, matrix. Uh, oh, this is the exercise yeah. I was doing. Yeah. Okay, come in the office hours because we uh, have more time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, the, 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 I, I don't, I think I might have only one left. Uh, can you s send me an email? And, uh, send me an email, yeah. And I'll send the admission code, yeah. Yeah, yeah. After the class.
the property of A and B is in the field of the property of B is in A. And then, and then you said that you don't have the code, right? You, excuse me, Mr. Spencer, do you have the code or? No, the no, no, code? It's just nice to write it. Hmm. You can oh. use log text to make it look nice. Oh, d but then you, either, you don't have the code, it just shows your work, right? No uh -huh. Let's talk afterwards because I was going to start now. Like, uh, um, so I don't know exactly what you mean. Um, and it's not hard. Once you, you know, you can look up a little log text cheat sheet. And then we'll tell you how to do everything. It's not really code, it's just writing in log text. Uh, so like, like code. Okay, shall we resume? Um, oh, okay. okay yeah, um, so we're talking about Bayesian parameter estimation so far. So l just to get to recap, so um, we... Um, We basically have um, the, probi the, uh, the posterior of something like a, probi um, a machine learning model, for example, or like a parameter given the data more, more broadly is equal to the prior of the model times the likelihood of the data given the model and uh, divided by the normalization factor. So again, it's called the posterior, it's called the prior, data likelihood, and it's a constant. Um, and in the case, for example, if our uh, ML model was that, that parameter theta this th that, that in, the, in our coin flip this this was our model was was that parameter theta and um, and and this is proportional to again uh, the, the prior times the data given the given the parameter theta so so here our train data is, is called Z um, so we can do two types of inferences here with Bayesian uh, uh, estimation. So we can do maximum likelihood, which again we uh, we just maximize the likelihood of um, the data z given a particular parameter, or we can do something called maximum a posteriori map estimate. And here we um, we uh, for the map estimate we do the maximum um, of of the posterior of of theta given the data z, which is equal to the prior maximum of the prior. Um, so prior, this is prior theta, this is the likelihood of z given theta divided by the normalization constant. So we can do both of these. I, one of them is maximum likelihood, which does not use a prior uh, form, and, and maximum a posteriori, which, which does a maximum over the posterior, and, um, and it does use the prior as well for this. Okay. Um, so, so how do we use, um, use this for learning? So, so we need to... Um, to use our data, so, so in general what we do is that we use data, a lot of data, like our data sets, to, to learn these models, to learn, for example, the, um, the, this is the posterior of, of the labels y given x, um, and, we, and, and, and we model it as the prior times the likelihood, and we use data, data to estimate those models, the, pri the prior model and the likelihood model. And we do model these as random variables, so, so, so y is a random variable, x is a random variable. And, and, uh, and again, these come from our data set. So y, y is the set of labels for the images, x are the actual images. So, so of course, uh, uh, often to, to model, to estimate these, it can take a lot of data. So can, this can take a lot of data to, to estimate these complex models. So, and there's something called the curse of dimensionality, which basically, uh, of course, the more um, data points we have, for example, like the more, um, uh, for example, th this axis, for example, th this can be like you know, a set of like a thousand images, for example. And, and un unless we assume they're independent, we have to estimate like a joint, a huge joint distribution over a thousand different variables, for example. Like, and each of them have like a lot of pixels, so it's, it's millions of, uh, of d dimensions. So that's, that's the, and this is where uh, it's, it's, it becomes impossible to, to learn this because of this cost of nationality. So, so an another approach is basically to use what we call like a class of models, and basically um, to, to think of each model M as, as a way to generate the training set Z of, of the images. So basically we have a model that can generate us the, the images. And we will, we'll, um, and, and this is what we call a soon generative model, a model that can generate us data, basically. Um, and we also have something called like Bayesian model selection. Uh, and I'm going super briefly through this, but it's actually, uh, we can even do an entire class on this. Like um, when we compute, um, so we use um, base rule to compute instead of a, a, a posterior over possible models, for example, like, you know, kind of like models here, meaning um, if we have a linear model or a quadratic model or like uh, different types of like 
and networks and so on, like and even network families. So so basically, compute a posterior of 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 over a set of models M, given data Z, again using Bayes rule, which is a prior of a uh, so, so there's a likelihood of a given data z, uh, z given n the model times the prior over the models divided by the constant. Um, and again, we can do maximum likelihood and also maximum a posteriori. Um, um, so, um, and another, another two other key concepts I wanted to review today was the, uh, this idea again of what we call generative models versus discriminative models. So again, with generative models, it's a model that can generate us images or examples. So, so we can generate us, if we have a set of images, it can generate us new images, for example, or if we have data from a patient in the hospital, it can generate us new patients, for example. So it learns how the data was, um, yeah, well, it learns like a manifold over the, the, the space of the data points. Um, so, and, and it does formally, it does basically, it, it learns um, a joint distribution of both the X's and the Y's both the data and the labels given 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 a particular model class whereas a discriminative model what it does it just learns a uh, distribution over the labels um, given the images already exist so this is what uh, the discriminative model generally just discriminates between between the data points so this is this is essentially a uh, um, generative model can generate us for example like a new image with a cat in it for example and then i want new image with a dog whereas the uh, discriminative model would only give in a particular image would tell us oh is it is does it have a cat or does it have a dog um so so it discriminates the labels apart um and 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 often it's also implemented as a as a function so if we don't want to do it in probabilistic terms like with the you know, probability with distributions we can simply have a function f that takes an input x and predicts a y and this is a called the discriminative function. And often um, this, this function, like uh, for example, if it's a neural net, for example, it might not predict always a single class. It might give you some kind of like activations and then it might say, oh, it's most likely, um, well, like 80% 80 80 or activation of 80% like a cat, something else, like 10%, something else and so on. So, so we just take the arg max of a, of a y. So we take what's the m maximum output for the labels to, uh, for example, it says, oh, 80% of it is a cat, so we take that as the final label. We do the argmax over the labels. Um, so, so that's a disc discriminative model, and that's, this is a generative model. Um, yes, yes, a good, that's a good question. So X uh, is bold because it is, um, it's a vector of many data points. So, so we assume that X actually has a, and also y will be vectors, but um, usually with bold, we re refer to as, 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 as basically vectors that have many data points. And uh, so, so x has an, x, so, so we, of course you have like, um, y would also have y1, y2, yn, but x also has an, another dimension basically. X, x is two dimensional, whereas y is, has a single dimension. So that's why we make x uh, in bold. Um, yeah, and any other question uh, apart from this? <coughs> okay. Um, <coughs> yeah, so, so essentially, um, so this is, a, again, on, on generative approach, um, we can again use, uh, use, a, use base rule to, um, to learn P of, uh, yeah, so we, we, we can, we can so essentially with, with the generative approach, we, we model the joint distribution. Um, but again, if we want to um, learn, for example, the, the, the posterior over the labels, given, given the x's and, and the models, we, we can again apply, apply base rule. Um, and this is a, a, the, the likelihood of, of x given y and m, given a y and a model. And here m is a model, is a class of models, times p of y given m divided by p of x given m. And of course, again, we need, we need models for something like this, for how do we model P of the likelihood of X given a Y and an M um, in this particular scenario. And, um, and what I wanted to get to is basically that this can be modeled with different uh, assumptions or distributions. For example, we can model P of X given Y and an M, this, this likelihood um, with a Gaussian distribution. For example, it could be the kind of Gaussian noise, it could be a different kind of noise distribution, maybe a Poisson noise or something else. Um, we can model the, 
the prior of, uh, over the labels Y, for example, with the Bernoulli distribution based on, based on coin flips or something else. Um, in, um, often in, uh, in Bayesian statistical learning, for example, we often assume uh, priors that are conjugate priors, they're called, and we assume something like a beta distribution over a particular parameter or a gamma distribution. So those are other kinds of like priors we'll talk about later. Um, but, uh, but we need to make an assumption, basically. We need to make an assumption about what are these terms. So it, it, this term could, could be a Gaussian, this could be a Bernoulli, um, because we will we'll need to use them, if I'm going back now, we will need to use them to, uh, to do the base rule and, and uh, find the posterior. So, how, so then the next question is, how do we learn or fit a Gaussian distribution on, on data? Um, so th this is, for example, this is the, um, for a one-dimensional Gaussian, um, this is the probability density function of the Gaussian. Uh, so this, this is, again, an expression I hope most of you have seen before. Um, which of you have seen this before, have worked with this? Okay, uh, so roughly 60-70%. Uh, um, so, so how do we, so the, the way we can, um, we can estimate, for example, parameters on a given a particular data is basically we can do maximum likelihood estimate, for example. So, um, so, so, so for example, if, if we do maximum likelihood estimate of what's, what's the likely, uh, given a data set of what's the most likely mu and sigma, we'll get that, that this is actually the sample mean, which is the mu would be one, mi one over n times the sum over the, all the data points, and the sample variance would be this. Um, 1 over n, and uh, which is equal to this, basically. So this is equal to the e of x squared minus e of x squared. So this is the definition of the variance that, I, that we gave earlier. So, um, so basically, what, 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 uh, what I'm trying to highlight is several things here. So that when we do the ML estimate, maximum likelihood estimate, this gives us the sample means and the sample variance. Um, and... Um, and then we can compute all of these, uh, again, from the probability density function, given a, a particular uh, data set, uh, set of images. So, so um, what about a quick exercise? So what is mu and sigma squared that best fit this particular data set? So minus 1, 1, 1, 7. So if we plot them, so, th so th uh, this is, uh, we have minus 1 here, we have two ones here, and the 7. So these are, these are four points, four data points. And we try to fit a distribution. Again, we'll see that it's roughly, this is the Gaussian distribution that we fit. Uh, it's roughly centered uh, at, the, at the mean, for example. So the mean of, the, of these numbers will be where the Gaussian is centered. And uh, it will have this, uh, this variance, again, given by, by the sample variance, 1 over n times that. Um, this is the formula for a multivariate Gaussian. So again, the same thing. But now, instead of in 1D, we, we're talking about multiple dimensions. So it's. Um, uh, sigma here is the covariance matrix. Uh, so this is the normalization constant of the, uh, th think of this, th th this is basically a, a, a constant that normalizes the distribution. So, so it all sums to one, it has to sum to one at the end. So that's why we have this term. And this is an exponential of y minus two, x minus mu, transpose sigma minus one, x minus mu. So um, it's, 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 yeah, it's basically x minus mu squared over sigma squared almost, but this is now in matrix form. So we have to write it like this. Um, and here, so sigma now is a covariance matrix. So basically, the, each element in sigma is sigma i j squared, which is which has this particular formula. So this is the covariance between uh, x i and x j. Um, and th these are basically different dimensions in the data. So if x uh, has uh, several dimensions, d dimensions, we take take two of those dimensions and we compute the covariance within those dimensions. Um, so, so again, I, uh, we, we briefly uh, mentioned earlier, so if we do the maximum likelihood on the Gaussians, um, if, we, if we compute, for example, what's the maximum, maximum arg max of, of mu, of, uh, over mu of P of X given mu and sigma, we will find that this solution, mu star, gives us the sample mean the mean of the sample. So literally, we take the numbers and we divide by n. And, for and the, for the same thing for covariance, we get a similar, yeah, a similar result. Um, I wanted to highlight that this is biased. This is a biased estimate. Um, 
in particular, and we have to actually, and to make it unbiased, we have to use n minus one for normalization. Um, and uh, and this is because well uh, this is th the reason why this happens is because the mean here mu is estimated from this equation rather than from a sample mean, so somehow we lose one degree of freedom, and uh, and to get this so to, to get this to be unbiased we have to divide by n minus one here. Um, so um, if the domain again is d-dimensional, so we have d parameters for mu, we have d times d minus one over two parameters for the covariances, and this is and this is the case for this is the case for each class. For, so, for example, so um, I, sh I should say for dimensions rather, like uh, instead of instead of classes here, but we have a lot of like a lot of that, well, we have so many parameters basically for each dimension. So, for example, if we if we're modeling um, what's like uh, an image, for example, the, the the dimensions of an image, for example, that has a, a one megapixel image has like one million pixels almost. So that's that's a huge dimensionality so so we will need a lot of data to model something like that with like a, like a simple Gaussian so um, so there's um, there's several ways that there's several kinds of tricks that that you can kind of do to basically learn these so for example we can uh, to and to simplify a bit these estimations we can assume we have a question there K is the um, the number of data points yes My bad. This is this should be n. Yes, yes, yes. I I I, I modified the index. Yes, this should be divided by k here. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, and and here as well. Yes. Um, I sh I should actually change it to n. Yes, and uh, this way it would be easier. But mm, actually no, because this n is the total number. I I'll, I'll fix that. I'll fix the n. But basically this this should be the same index here. So the the. the the number of uh, data points divided by a total number of data points. So no, this is a sum of data points divided by total number. Yeah, um, and I'll fix the indices, yeah. Um, any other questions? No, so um, so a few common tricks. When we have all these like really large settings, what, what we can do, for example, we can simplify things. For example, we can as uh, assume that we share the same um, covariance matrix for all the classes or for all like the uh, dimensions we can assume diagonal uh, for example like covariance matrices um, for each class so here for example again we can we can assume that these these matrices are diagonal for example and and these um, these off diagonal terms are just zero um, and we can also assume uh, yeah like a more like a spherical kind of like a form of a, um, also diagonal but um, this is a C times I, C times an, uh, it's, it's an uh, identity matrix that is scaled by, by a constant. Um, I, I'm, I'm not gonna go through this into too much detail. Um, let's do a quick exercise, so just to show you a bit like of a derivation, for example, so, oh, uh, how do I remove that? It should be high, why didn't it see that? Let me, I didn't realize. Well, I guess. Oh, more, yeah. Hide the fl f video float MIDI control. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so it's not showing there. Can people still see my screen on uh, on Zoom? No. It's not showing anymore. Uh, Let me start a share again. Now no, it works, right? Okay, so um, 
quick exercise now. So let, let's try to uh, compute the expectation of a gamma random variable. So, um, so, so gamma is a gamma distribution. Uh, gamma random variable is simply a random variable that follows this uh, gamma uh, probability density function. So, so this is the equation. It's beta. Uh, it has two parameters, alpha and beta, and f of x is equal to beta to the power of alpha over this gamma constant, this uh, gamma of alpha times this equation. Uh, it has a support that is positive, so, so uh, gamma is always from zero to infinity. And the first thing we do, so how do we do this? So the first thing is we compute the expectation. We, we write down the expectation formula. So what's the expectation? It's the integral over the support of the function from, so from zero to infinity of x times f of x. OK, so far? Um, and then um, and the first thing we do here is we replace the density function f of x with the actual equation, with actual formula from the gamma distribution. So we write that e of x is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity. So we, we use the support of x times x of x times the density function of the gamma, which is this. That's the first step. On that yeah. Uh, it's it's written like this because um, this is um, a function, a density function over the random variable x. So big X, capital X is a, a random variable. A small x is an instantiation of that random variable. So so this will be normal, formally written f of big X of <coughs> big X equals small x. So it's uh, um, uh, so th this shows the, the uh, that this is a function of of the random variable of over this support uh, from zero to infinity. So the domain of x is zero to infinity. Um, so, so the first thing we do, the first thing we do is that we uh, we, we write it down like this. In the, in the first line, we basically put the the equation of the density function in in here. So we have the expectation of expected value of x is equal to x times this. And then the the key trick that we have to do is to make this thing inside here look like also like a gamma uh, PDF, probability density function. So we have to change a bit the structure. So, so this again, because we have an extra x here, we have to, we will merge it in, into here. So we add this x into here in the next line, and we get this. And, and now we have something that almost looks like a gamma PDF, but it's not exactly there. So what we have to do is to change it a bit, massage it a bit to, to get back to something like this if it makes sense and and what we something we can so, so now you see one, one thing we have is that we have an extra x here in the exponent so now this is this will be so um so from uh, x to the alpha minus one so so this this this, this changed to a basically but but this should be alpha um it's the same so so we have an extra one uh an extra exponent here alpha so we, we, move, we went from alpha to a to a plus one and and we we change this structure to to start looking a bit like a like a, this uh, like this formula, but with a plus one or alpha plus one basically instead of a. So this is what we're doing. And uh, so we're adding an, uh, in the exponent here of b. We adding we make sending it to a plus one. We t we have this already as a plus one, and we we're missing just this one gamma of a. And uh, are you with me so far? And and we can use a, something like a relation that is well known, for example, that gamma of x plus 1 is equal to gamma of x times x. So this is a well-known relation. And we simply use this. And now we turn this into the, the, the term on the bottom here from gamma of a to gamma of a plus 1. So, so right here beforehand, it was gamma of a. And now we use this, and we turn it into a gamma of a plus 1. And now what we have here on the right is the PDF of a gamma distribution, but now with a plus 1. And this, um, uh, so 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 this is basically gamma of x, but with a plus one instead of a and b, and simply and now we know that the integral over this has to has to be one because the, the integral over, over over the support of any distribution has to be one. So then we get that e of x is equal to just a over b times times one, which is a over b. So that that's an example of how we can compute these expectations, for example, for for distributions and that. 
continues and so on. And the, sa and the same for variance. So, so, and the same thing applies for variance. We generally have uh, the same kind of we put the variance formula and we try to change the uh, what, what we have in here to again to kind of look like a again like a gamma distribution or yeah or distribution that would then integrate to one so then like we can still uh, so, uh, solve in the same way the, the variance equation we have a question yeah 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 exactly so so you always uh, whenever you have x times that number for the integral you'll you'll have an extra x or an exponent like if, if, if you already have a, um, you see you already had the x to an exponential in terms of x so this will increase your exponent when you do the x times that and you have to rechange a bit it so that it is still yeah yeah how can e to the negative beta times x transfer into exp of negative p times x yeah, sorry, this, this is the same notation. So exp okay. of minus bx is, is uh, e to minus okay. beta x. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Um, and you can find also online, so many other kinds of derivations like this for other distributions as well. So. Um, and you have in, in, in the assignment, so this I'm showing is because in the assignment you have an exercise we've added when we have to do this for a Gaussian distribution. So you'll have to compute the A of X and the variance of X for a Gaussian distribution. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so so we're, gonna, we're gonna talk a bit about linear algebra. We'll start a bit, but we'll continue next time. Do we have any, uh, any questions before we move there? Is it is it clear with Bayesian and Bayesian learning probabilistic uh, elements like conditioning, all of this independence? Okay, l l let's start through this and then we continue more on Thursday. So, so we have what um, five more minutes. Um, so, so a matrix is basically um, as linear algebra is literally a, a matrix with m rows and n columns represented like this and we have uh, x here is a vector with an entry so that's what we call by a matrix and a vector these are definitions and um and again it's a two, so 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 here's a rega regarding your question to differentiate from a scalar we often use a bold x so so often x is, is a is a vector uh that we differentiate from a scalar um an element i is noted as x of i an element in the matrix is noted as a i j so uh, element that uh, row uh, position i j in the matrix so row i column j um, the j column of a we refer to as a j uh, or like this and the i row we simply take a uh, a i and 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 this is transpose uh, transpose or we write it like this basically so um so so it's because what this means is that uh, the transpose of a matrix we first transpose the matrix then we take the the column so so that's um, that's what I mean. So so matrix multiplication. So we have if we have two matrices A, R, M times N and B, and C, then uh, and C is, is C is basically A times B. Uh, uh, when we multiply matrices, this is a definition. So so C I J becomes this, the sum of overall case of A I K times B K J. Um, and and the result, the resulting matrix, when we multiply them uh, of A times B, this will be an R. M times P. So this this will be uh, uh, this M and this P. So th this will be and and N is basically cancelled out in the in the in the summation. And we have inner products, outer products um, of. Uh, so I, I won't go too deep into this, but I'm, I'm sort of showing them so we so we kind of like can, can basically read read them also like at home and and. Um, um, X X the inner product is basically. Uh, when you have like a row vector and a column vector you simply multiply them out you the summations outer product is basically the other way around and th this gives you a matrix so inner product gives you a scalar outer product gives you a matrix um, so that's matrix multiplication we have a times x we have um we we get these these results uh, this is like another way to express it so so this is an inner product between a1 transpose times x and so on 
uh, and th this is like a 1D vector. And, and similarly, um, uh, X transpose A, we can also uh, do this. And uh, and this will be something called y transpose, and th and then this will be like um, vectors of a x axis times the uh, a one transpose, and which will be which will be this. Um, and and these uh, matrices have several properties. So for example, matrix multiplication has uh, something called associative properties. So a times b times c is uh, so if if we can first uh, multiply a times b uh, or first multiply b times c, and we still get the same result. And we also have distributive properties. So a times b plus c is equal to a b plus a c. Um, I think I'll stop here, um, and uh, we'll continue next time. Um, and and do come. So, so we have a discussion session at three twenty today, and do come to that. And uh, and office hours. We have office hours today and Thursday. So if you if you need have any questions for the time, okay. Yeah. One question. So I download this from Google Drive. But yeah. I see this yeah, yeah. 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 I know. You can. Um, I know. I, I have to send them off. Uh, I realized like uh, right before uploading. I don't see them on my side. Yeah. But, uh, I don't see them like in the yeah. Google Drive folder. But, uh, like here, I can't. I don't see those. But yeah. 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 I know. I know. So. Uh, I, I'll send them off. I'll send them off in the PowerPoint. I I forgot it I f because I yeah I and have the, I had them hidden. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I noticed from the syllabus you said there are two discussion sessions held by every uh, yeah. So yeah. Is there only one? Oh uh, no, just one one discussion session. But the the, the TAs have office hours if you need. Yeah. Okay. But if I cannot attend, that, is there any recording? Ah, uh, there will be. Yes, they will. They will record it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, the last question is about this. So can you tell me this man, why it's three five? Yeah, it's because um, so Google that Laplace's rule of succession. Basically, there's a formula where um, Im imagine you have a three, you had a th three trials, but two were successful and one was a failure. Uh, what Laplace's rule of succession says is that if you uh, compute the probability that the next next trial will be a success or a failure, you simply take the successful ones two, uh -huh. you add an extra one, okay. and then you take the total uh, divide by the total one, and you add two. You basically add one success and one failure, and basically like re compute it. This is what. Um, okay. Um, I should look into. Look into. Uh, just Google that. Yeah, okay. like and uh, explain. I, I. This is more. Li this is more of a remark. Okay. It's not something that you should kind of like. You know. I don't. Yeah. Sometimes like you should kind of know that this. This. This is not a coincidence. This comes to to oh. the La Paz okay. More like that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. I'm on the waiting list. I just wanted to know that. Do I have enough chance to get this? Yeah, I can try to get some uh, uh, more permission code to enroll. Like, yeah, that's that's fine. So come come to the, come to the classes and the and the assignment. Uh, the next assignment is on Monday, but and I will uh, give you a permission code. I have to ask. Yeah. So since uh, uh, I don't have access to Canvas or anything uh, for this, but I so send me send me an email. Send me an email. Okay. Send yeah. me an email. Yeah. And also right. I right can ask from my friends. You can ask your friends. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Assignment. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so where is our, our discussion session taking place, sir? In uh, Oaks 103, I think. Um, I'll have to I'll have to leave soon, but yes, sir. Oaks 105, Oaks 105 here. Yes, sir. Yeah. So the over there, you, you see this one? Yeah, Oaks 105. Yeah.